G'day folks, Rod Moore here from Learn to Paint TV and Learn to Paint Academy. Welcome to another exciting episode of Learn to Paint TV. Now this week we're going to do a, a little painting, it's going to be a bit different from what we normally do. Uh, this is going to be a, a boat or a yacht on the river as the sun's setting in the distance and it's um, lighting up the boat, making it glow, sort of a yellowy orange colour. You've got this beautiful reflection into the water. And we're going to do this as, as a, uh, a portrait version rather than our typical sort of landscape approach to what we do. Okay, let's start with step one now in the more method of painting, which is to get a basic drawing down on our canvas so we know where our big shapes are going to be. Now, to, in order to do the drawing, I usually use a combination of our blue and our red, and the blue is ultramarine blue. Normally I'd use a permanent crimson in the Artelia interactive range. However, I've run out, so I'm using a magenta. So it doesn't really matter that much. Um, the magenta and the permanent crimson are both a cool, transparent red, so the magenta will do just as well. I'm going to use a little flat brush, and look, the most important part of this painting is clearly going to be getting that boat shape in. So, if you have a look here, this shape here is the key to the whole painting, so we can put the mask and everything in once we get that shape. And it's also positioning on the canvas. Now, we don't want it right in the centre. From a compositional point of view, that just won't look that great. So what we uh, are probably better off to do, we can either drop it down, there's a fairly dramatic sky, big stormy sky, or we could raise it up and get more of the reflection and the sand embankment. In fact, this is probably the key to this painting, is getting that boat shape in the right location there. So we'll get some blue and the red together. Mix those up, and a bit of water in there just to make that paint flow a bit better. It's the only time I really use water with acrylic paint. Okay, and I'm going to hold the photo just while I get this shape in. So I know the base of it, I want it to run through there. Okay, which means the reflection is going to fall kind of in there. about there and I'm gonna run that along and it does tape it down a little bit to about there and then you can see a little bit of the back of it and that runs sort of like so there I'm not gonna fuss too much with the details of that information there just yet Okay, so that's just one long shape there. If you get that in, then you're looking good, I think. Um, and then you've got a cabin that sort of runs in through there. The, and the other details of this, we won't worry about just yet. Okay. It's got some windows in there. Okay, so that's all we really need for the boat at this stage, is to get the basic shape in. Make sure it's not too big, not too small. My overall mine's probably just a touch too big, I suspect, but that's okay. Now I know that if I look at this, I can see that the top of that roof of the boat there, okay, there's still a gap before we get to the waterline. So the waterline is sitting somewhere, well, the, you know, the far embankment rather, sitting somewhere like that. Now with the trees on the waterline there, they're just sort of fairly random, it's sort of mangrovey, swampy, so the trees, just pop them in, don't get too fussed with it, okay? And then as I said, I'm going to introduce this sort of sandbank area through there. Fairly easy approach, and what I want to show you is, you know, not to get too um, caught up in painting boats, because they can represent a lot of detail, a lot of complexity, if you allow them to. And I'm just going to show you how to do it really simply, which is what we're all about here at Learn to Paint TV and at the Learn to Paint Academy. We show you a simple approach that anybody can start painting with. Um, and what I've done so far there, you can do this at home, right? Um, by the way, this is a 16 inch by 20 inch canvas uh, for those who, who are interested. Okay, let's do step two now, the more method of painting. We're now going to block in our colors, get our values right and so on. Um, I put up some more blue, and you can see it's running a bit. Ultramarine blue, the magenta, yellow ochre, and titanium white. 
So the logical place for us to start here is going to be with the shadow in the trees here. So let, I'm just going to use a big brush. So it's a big flat um, hog hair or bristle brush. Okay, um, nothing too fancy. These are quite cheap at the art supplies store. So we need a dark shadow tone. So we're going to take the blue. We're going to take the red. And that's going to do the most of our our um, heavy hitting here with this shadow tone. Okay, it's going to go a little bit purple. We need to grey it back a little, so I'll get a little bit of the yellow ochre into that mix. Okay, that'll just grey it a bit because it's in the distance. We don't want it to um, be too coming forward too much because it's too saturated. And then I'll just lighten it back a bit with some white. Okay, we'll just see what the outcome of that is. It doesn't look too bad there, and it looks like it could work there with the right highlight tone over it. So what I'll do, I'm just going to put in a shadow tone in here and I'm going to use you know, a big brush, a lot to paint. I'm not going to fuss but I want to scruff up those edges because this is a mangrove swampy sort of uh, other side of the river there. Pretty wild sort of place over there and uh, we don't want to have it neat and pretty it isn't right we want to try and replicate nature so that's why you'll see I'm just scrubbing that brush around and for those people who struggle to paint trees give this a try right? don't try and paint trees just try and scrub your brush around like that and then you need, look you need one that's a bit taller you don't want them all the same height so see how there's quite a bit of variance in that tree line there like so that's what you want to look for so you want to have jagged edges broken lines, don't have any sort of rounded lines over your trees and just scrub it in, you know, don't, don't get caught up in trying to paint a tree. Maybe a touch yellower and just a little tiny touch lighter and uh, that's, that's a bluey greeny grey on a grey day as a storm rolls in. So we could probably work with that. Biggest problem I'm going to have here is I didn't mix up enough paint and uh, it's about to become uh, immediately obvious. Okay, get that horizon line. So I'm blurring the edges of the, of the water and the edge of the, um, of the row of trees there on the embankment. Doing that deliberately so that we get a nice soft edge there. Okay. We don't want the eye being caught up on that embankment. We want it to be up on the highlights and on the boat there. So, what does that tell us? We don't have enough paint. We need more blue. We need more yellow. Okay. A little bit more yellow. Too dark, so I need a touch white. Okay, work that in. Now when we put that glowing yellow effect of sunlight on the bow, it's going to really make this um, all work well together. Okay, now we're getting quite close to the embankment or to the where we're viewing this from, so we need to be lighter and uh, a little bit more yellow again. And notice I've changed the direction of my brush so I'm now Striking it that way to, to run it in line with the uh, with the sandbank on this side of the river. Okay, a little bit more blue in that. See so, how yeah, I've swiped through the yellow ochre. Rather too enthusiastic, I suspect. That's okay. A little bit of that in there won't hurt. I'll just suggest that the water's a bit shallower in that spot, which it is, because it's coming in to the uh, shoreline there. Okay. okay, just clip into some of that, make it a bit... Let's see, it needs to be a bit lighter. Okay. 
So notice it's sort of on the mauve side, but then so is the shadow of the branches or the, or the trees there. So, whoops, I should have cleaned that brush. It's got a bit of green in there. But that's okay, it'll tie it in, right? So everything, because I'm only using a few colors, or, you know, little bits left on the brush and so on, um, but it's not a major problem because it will create harmony with what's already up there. Um, if you're using 35 different colors, you're going to end up a lot muddier and a lot, lot more mess. Trust me, I've done it. <laughs> when I simplified my palette right down and got good at learning how to paint with a limited palette, which meant I had to mix colors, that's when my painting really took off. You know, I, my first experience with painting, went to the art supply store and bought 35 different colors, right? And didn't know what to do with any of them. <laughs> So simplify, your life will get a lot easier and you'll enjoy your painting a lot more and it'll make sure you have to learn how to mix up different colors. Okay. So you can use the sky as a way of reshaping tops of the trees there. And work that in, make it a bit of a sandbar there. some of that in. I'm just putting a little bit of that sand colour back into where I've got the water so we can create the effect of some you know, sort of shallow water, I'll put some ripples there and that'll create a, you know, effect we've got very shallow water. So, that's about all we need to do for step two. I'm not going to tackle the boat until this is all dry. Then we'll come back in and we'll start on the boat. Um, pretty simple approach. I think we're capturing that sort of moody, storm rolling in kind of feel. Um, it's not a bright sunny day. There's a storm, but there's a setting sun which is lighting up the boat and these trees, um, so we'll capture that. And uh, it's going on track, you know, we've got a nice transition in our water, some interest in there. This sandbank to sort of anchor against the tall tree across the boat there. And you know, by the time I put the post in and water ripples and things like that, it's gonna come up a good little painting, I think. So I'm gonna let that dry. Um, probably take half an hour to an hour to dry. Then we're gonna come back and we'll do step three, which is where we'll detail up the boat We'll add in the highlights and the sunlight, and uh, this will come up as a really nice little painting you wait and see. So um, I'll let it dry, and I'll see you in about half an hour to an hour. Cheers. Okay, folks, welcome back. Now going to do step three. This has obviously had a chance to fully dry out, and just having a quick look at it. it looks like we're on track. I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, the way it's going so far. So our next step is we'll put in some highlight on this back row of... Um, trees here, the mangrove sort of trees, a good help of the yellow ochre, okay, and then some white. And what we want to do is create a, it's a green, but it's lit up by this glowing afternoon sun. And so therefore the yellow ochre will help us get that effect. And just a little bit of the cadmium yellow light in there as well will just help get that glowing sort of effect that we're looking for. And uh, we want to make sure we preserve up a lot of the darks here as well. Sunlight's coming in from this direction. So therefore, we're going to have this highlight color is going to sit where that sunlight would be hitting. Okay. It's gonna be catching the tops of these trees here. And it's gonna be falling on that left-hand side. So just work it up gently. Don't have too much paint on the brush. One of the challenges with acrylics is that you get too much paint on the brush and it can come off a bit clumpy onto your canvas. Okay, That's something you learn through experience, I guess. Um, but trust me, it's better to not have too much 
hang on there if you can avoid it. Okay. Get the punch that just a little bit yellow ochre and a little bit red in there. Just shift that tone slightly. Okay. And I'm just wiping this brush over just nice and gently. Let the hairs get pulled by the canvas tooth to pull the paint off. Bigger tree, it's going to be catching sun all around the top there. Okay. It's late afternoon setting sun on it, so therefore we need to just shift the tone of it in that direction. We'll put a little bit of white off one end, but this, the majority of it here, it's probably not even enough, I don't think. Got a little touch of the red and the yellow ochre. Okay. And we'll just, that's put together. Okay. So I'm just gonna block in the body of it here. And that goes in shadow at the end. Lots of sunlight in the reflection. Okay, and then notice the way I'm using that brush. I've got the flat brush and I'm just dragging it horizontally. Okay. Get a little bit of that up into in there as well. Okay, now as it comes towards the front end, it's the white of the boat is showing up more, so we'll take a swipe of white and just pop it into one side. They won't go pure white, but I'll just get a little bit of that white there, and uh, we'll just run that in, like so. Just blurring up that reflection a little bit. We don't want that to be too definitive. So we'll just make some little marks in there to indicate the reflection in the water. Okay. This end bit here is in shadow. So we'll take the white, then we'll take a little bit of the ultramarine blue and a little bit of the magenta there. That's just way too pinky purple, so we'll add more blue into that. Okay, that's kind of what we want. Just for the shadow of the end of that boat there. And there's probably a little bit of shadow falling just there as well. And there's going to be a little bit of a window in the boat, which I'm Okay, we have to get a small brush for. Same thing, little flat brush now, just going for a slightly smaller version. And I'll just make a mark there to indicate a window and I'll tighten that up by working paint around it. A little bit of water and we'll pick up that tone there. Then that's pretty much what the mast of this is. So I'm just going to just uh, run it down like so. And I'm not going to fuss about getting this mask 100% correct, but it comes out around about there. Got a little bit thick, so I'll just move it up to there. Okay. Get into this slightly lighter version, and there's like the rail that runs along here. And there, it has a anchor in the water. And there's a range of other masts and things. It has Probably just wants to come up just a touch higher. 
Süß. Tile lines and things that run like so. Two out to the back. There's a few bits and pieces that are going on in there, which I don't have no idea what they are, but we've put in a couple of marks. Just picking up on the uh, cloudy sky colour. We'll just see whether we can just create some water ripples around this edge here of the sand. So you got that sandbar there, so put some water ripples along there and that will indicate that we've got water running over those sandbars. There's a couple of other boats out the back here, which would be interesting to get those in. I'll use a little bit of this blue with the yellow, just to sort of dull it back a bit. But, uh, let's just pop in one in here. So I'm probably not going to do too much more of the boat area, uh, more of the background. I think what we need to do is maybe just get a little bit more colour variation in the water here. Right, the greens. Now remember all this will dry a bit darker as we, as the paints dry off. Okay. Get a little bit more bluey water in there as well. Well, it's got a bit of a green in it, but that's okay. Some of that. That would probably go for maybe a couple of touches of this purple to turn in there as well. Just for, I don't know, I'm experimenting really. Um, let's just see what happens with it. Bit of red in there. Now it would have been okay as it was, um, as a simple little painting, but it needs a little bit of extra interest in the water there. So we're just experimenting. See what will happen if we add in different things, you know, different touches that maybe you wouldn't have thought to do. But because we're using a limited palette, these colours are going to work. You know, that red that's in there, the magenta is up in that there, and it's you know throughout the um, overall painting. So, well, there you go. I think as a little beginner approach. Painting an interesting looking uh, yacht out on Noosa River, catching all the afternoon sun. I think it works reasonably well. There's a bit of interest there. We've created a little bit more interest just with a few simple brush marks. Um, a bit more interest in the water there. And uh, I think it's come up reasonably well as a little bit.
beginner demo painting that I think you can have a go at at home. So um, remember the steps, we know we drew an outline of the boat and the reflection. We drew a line there for the bank of the river and an outline of the trees, just scribbled it in really. Drew an embankment. So that was our drawing. Then we blocked in the right tone. Um, the river here, we had the darker water at the back and then getting lighter as it got towards the sand here on this side. And then I've just done a few little details. There's hardly any details at all really in what I've done. Um, I've deliberately done it that way to keep it a simple painting so you can have a go at home. Uh, you know, there's a lot more you could have done to detail this painting up, but I've deliberately kept it fairly simple. And I think you could probably pull this one off at home quite easily. So have a go at it and uh, let me know how you go. So I'll see you next time on Learn to Paint TV. You can check out all the episodes of Learn to Paint TV. Uh, the web address underneath me here, www.learntopaint.tv. And if you want a free course where I go into our approach and, the, and our methodology that's helped 25,000 students around the world, drop by the Learn to Paint Academy. Again, the web address underneath me, www.learntopaint.academy. And then look on the menu there, it'll say free course up in the top of the menu there. Click on that, get yourself registered, and, uh, and I'll teach you the steps we went through in quite a bit more detail. You'll learn more about how you can get started painting with the more method of painting. So, hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. Um, late afternoon yacht on Noosa River. I've certainly enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers.